Hello, everybody. Easy here. Accessing your Steam library to play games on Android is finally here. There are, however, some limitations. In this video, we will be going over Pluvia for Android, as well as testing a large amount of games from my library. Pluvia is a front-end for WinLater that allows you to sign in and access your DRM-free Steam library. Now, there's a bit to go over there, so let's unpack it. WinLater is an application based off Box86 and other programs to run Windows executables on Android. Pluvia is built on top of this to handle all the heavy front-end work and container settings to allow easy access to your Steam games using WinLater. Steam implements a layer of digital rights management across many titles. However, some games lack this. These games are easily installed in Pluvia, and play on phones easily. Now that you understand the basics, let's go over Pluvia. But before we look at setting up this app, let's see what it can do. On initial startup, you'll see a login screen. If you're hesitant to log into Steam through a third-party program, that's a good general online safety practice. This program utilizes Valve's authorization software to ensure a one-time check, and all data is stored locally. You can view the privacy agreement in the description as well. Once you've logged in, you'll notice your library begin to load. After it has, select a compatible game and install it. Installation speeds can vary, but patience is key. Once installed, you can select Play. During this video, the FPS monitor you will see is available as a part of Retroid's floating FPS monitor under Quick Step. This is a pretty accurate screen refresh rate based monitor that I found to be comparable to Samsung's available monitors. I'm using this on my Retroid Pocket 5, which Retroid was actually nice enough to send me for development and review. Thanks to Retroid for supplying this test device, and keep your eyes out for more videos using it on my channel very soon. Visit Retroid's catalog in the description of this video. You'll notice a large majority of your Steam library will show up and be available for play. However, I did find some restricted titles would either not show up on the list, or would appear as question mark, or would pause during installation. Regardless of that, a large majority of titles are available to install and attempt to launch. Compatibility may be quite finicky, however. I was able to get some games such as Origami, Helltaker, Cuphead, and others to run with no setbacks. Older titles like Chris Sawyer's Locomotion or Conflict Desert Storm launched with little hassle. However, there were plenty of other titles that gave me issues. I had high hopes for a lot of the titles on Steam's no DRM list, however it seemed many would not work correctly with default settings. Attempting to adjust container settings for Box64 seemed to change little in terms of results that I tried. However, I am admittedly not the best at configuring Windows translation layers. Titles like Far Cry 2 or Abzu, which are both on the no DRM list, would not run for me. Abzu loaded the splash image but would not subsequently run, and Far Cry 2 gave me a common path not found error. I began my tests by working through my library alphabetically for small games to test, preferably a couple gigabytes. This is because of the issues with installing some games, like install freezing, CPU usage, and installs disappearing. This meant I tested a lot of indies, small titles, mini games, and even a bit of shovelware at first. I decided I would come back for larger titles at a later point once I finished the small ones. This is partially because of those issues I mentioned, partially because of time limits, and partially that I just have little faith in something like Cyberpunk or Fallout 4 working correctly at this moment. 
If I wasn't able to get some games in this video, I'll return to them later for my overall win later video. This would also give me a chance to run Pluvia on my 8G1 for a second round of testing. I tested a total of 146 games that attempted to initialize and attempted to run even more. My findings were that only a limited number would actually run, and even then performance could be limited in some titles. Things like Undertale or Pizza Tower ran too slow to be playable. But other titles like Cuphead, Hotline Miami 2, or Super Meat Boy ran at reliable FPS. One limitation in the app at the moment is the lack of ability to adjust one later settings for each container, meaning adjustments are limited for the time being. This leaves some titles that would run on default one later with little adjustments, not running through Pluvia. For example, here is Little Kitty Big City running through one later's official repo, compared to hanging and freezing in Pluvia. I was fortunate enough to get in touch with the devs of the app, and they've taken all my bug reports and feedback into account. I have high hopes for the upcoming updates. When it comes to game crashes, the app does seem to have a crash encountered notification, but it only triggers when the app itself encounters a hard crash. Games and containers that hang or even OOM the system do not seem to trigger this notification. What's more annoying is that the frequent donation request notification will pop up instead of the crash notification. Another glaring flaw is the lack of audio in most compatible games, which I really hope is addressed soon. About 1 in 10 of my games have correct audio. And I've run into a bug with crispy audio before. And at one time, I even had audio begin in an entirely different language. One thing I've noticed as well is that there's no in-game Steam overlay, so there's no Steam community or friends list in-game. Online connectivity is also not possible in games, limiting a number of titles to single player only. Despite this, Steam will register your current game activity and playtime, meaning it will show up in your Steam community playtime and history. I haven't tested with achievements, but inventory and trading cards will still be earned. This is a nice feature available through Pluvia. I did notice some games had issues recognizing the controller, which could be problematic. In some cases it wasn't as big a deal, such as having mismatched buttons in certain titles. In some games, not recognizing the controller means I would have to rely on keyboard and mouse input, which wasn't possible. Controllers also seemed to not control well on the main Pluvia UI, and I was often resorting to touch controls to select installations and games. With all that said, let's take a look at some of the games that I found performed the best on this application. Overall, I have quite a few thoughts on this application as it currently stands. If I were to give it a bulleted pros vs cons list, here's what I'd have to say about my experience. Pros. Easy setup. Community integration. Simplistic, straightforward design. Useful concept. Lots of potential. Performance can be well when compatible. Cons. Low compatibility. Audio issues. Buggy menus and UI. 
This is being looked into. Slow download and unpack times. Very high CPU utilization on unpacking. Installations randomly disappearing. This will also be addressed in the future. No Steam Overlay UI. This is being worked on. Cannot adjust wind lighter settings, only container settings. This is apparently being addressed. Unstable. The app crashed a lot and caused a lot of OOMs as well. My closing thoughts. Overall, I'd have to say this app has a lot of promise in the future. At the moment, you can see the blueprints and groundwork to create a great, lightweight, user-friendly, portable installer for Steam using WinLater on Android. Going forward, I'd love to see new improvements, such as utilizing WinLater and Switch Emulation's GPU import to have an automatic library selection for drivers, or the ability to adjust WinLater settings per container. As it stands, it still needs some basic features adjusted, such as further controller support, audio fixes, menu fixes, and more. For the moment, it's something to keep your eyes on, because with more optimization and growth, this could make an amazing utility to play Steam games on the go in the future. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like, comment your thoughts down below, and consider subscribing for more content like this. If someone you know might be interested in the video, be sure to share it with them. What were your favorite apps shown here? Start a discussion with others in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and enjoy your games!